Hi, it's Cameron Reynolds, and in this video, we're going to throw on some sugar bricks on this colony. Kind of check them out just for a second. And then we're going to go over there and look really quickly at a colony that we really helped out in December. Because, whew, the colony went, well, it didn't go queenless, but it had a queen that was laying drones. And that is a death sentence to a colony at this time of the year. And really, it's, it's rough at any time of the year. Um, I don't know exactly why that happened but sometimes it does and it's definitely up there in the top two or three reasons why we lose colonies it's just queens um, having issues maybe it's because she didn't get mated properly or I've seen this a couple of times where they've tried to requeen late in the season and it's just too late for a lot of suitable drones and they go into winter with a young queen that just just lays drones so for whatever the reason we had an issue with that queen and we resolved it because we had a little hive with a very good queen from one of our queen cells all right, we're going to smoke down into here. You can see we have a little bit of sugar brick left, and we have a bit of pollen patty. So we're going to throw a little bit more sugar brick on here, and just real quick, kind of see what's going on. I've got one of the new lids on the other colony over there that we just dipped yesterday. Oh man, they've eaten a lot of that, and I put a big patty on there. There's not much left, and they haven't wasted much. If any, it's still pretty soft. It's really nice yeah that's really nice all right so let's see how much sugar brick is left sorry about the lighting but we've just been so busy lately we worked on building equipment and wax dipping for about 14 hours yesterday and it was very difficult to get the wax dipping video in and you know just keeping up with everything we don't really get into colonies a lot this time of the year um, occasionally to throw in a patty or something like that on the big ones. We really don't give the little ones much attention. We'll start giving them a lot more attention in late February, early March. The bees were getting something from the maple trees yesterday, but I'm not sold that it was pollen. I'm pretty sure it was more than likely some type of sap or something. Because they weren't bringing any pollen baskets in. And they were still working the ultra bee. I set a little bit out just to see if there was any pollen coming in and it seems like if there's any pollens coming in they really don't work that dry ultra bee sub very much at all oh wow capped brood up here just look at those bees see how they're clustering so tightly up against it they can feel this cool air and they're putting their bodies together to create a nice heat layer over the brood okay Wow, there's a lot of capped brood in here. Yeah, we are just in the first day of February. A lot of fuzzy bees, another fuzzy bee over there. So this colony is growing for sure. And this time of the year, mm, I can smell the Nazanov or the Nazanov, however you pronounce that word. It probably depends on where you're from. I love that bee smell right there. All right, we're going to put them back together. So they're doing good, and this pollen patty, I do believe, is having some benefits to the colony now you're probably wondering why we're putting the sugar brick in i actually don't think they need it but mm, that smells so good sorry i just love that smell and i'm just going to stick the sugar brick we've already had two in here and i figure you know what we're going to keep putting it on this colony just uh i've never really tinkered around with sugar bricks a whole lot so i'm learning a lot of stuff myself this year all right so here's one Let's smoke the bees down so we don't crush any. Sorry, girls. We'll, girls, we'll put this all back together here in just one second. This is a sugar brick that I dropped. Whoops. And I don't think it's going to work very good um, compared to the others because I left it out for about 10 days without putting any heat around it. And... It still feels a little soft in the center. You saw how my hand scraped a little bit of it off. So I don't know. I'm going to be checking and seeing. And I'll let you all know if they kick some of this out because of the lack of dryness, for lack of a better word, I guess. It's not much like a brick in the center. It's a little bit more soft, but hey, maybe they'll, they'll like it. So I didn't have to heat it or anything. So there's that. Let's go check on the other colony real quick and we won't get too into detail on that one but i want to show you the new lid 
All right. Now again, we have many, many colonies that we're not getting into. We're not throwing sugar bricks in them because they just don't need it. There's some colonies that almost break my back when I pull that deep off the top because there's so much honey left on the colony. But for the sake of our videos and, and for you all, because if you have an emergency situation, I want you to understand that, yeah, if it's 40 degrees, because so many people will tell you you can't, you just can't do it. But if it's like this temperature, 40, 30, whew, you can throw in a sugar brick or something like that and you can save your colony. I don't know how many times in years past I've had some really big colonies that were more than capable of making a full crop of honey starve in March because they just burned through their resources because they didn't have enough. And it, it does happen from time to time. So over here, we are going to check this lid out real quick. This is one of our new ones we just dipped yesterday. Nothing fancy about it. Oh, this colony, if you look at that right there, they just look healthy. I threw in, there's a little bit of pollen patty and there's this um, pro winter winter patty that from uh, Man Lake and it does a uh, pretty well, I, I guess. I just don't, I don't really see a whole lot of benefits out of the extra pollen put in there because my thoughts are it doesn't take that long for us to go from not feeding anything to feeding pollen patties. So why do I need to have it in that as well? That's just my opinion, but I know a lot of beekeepers that use it and like it very much and the bees eat it. I would just be very careful again if you're in an area where the bees can't get out and take a cleansing flight on using it because you definitely don't want them to have a lot of roughage in their gut for more than you know several weeks to a couple months. That could be really rough on the colony. But look at all those bees everywhere. And if you didn't know, this is a colony that had the drone laying queen. So we took one of our little two and a half to three frame mating nukes that we were overwintering and we just plugged a quality queen in here. And let's see if we can find her just real quick. I know it's dark, but we're gonna do it anyways. I don't get into beehives much this time of the year, so I love it. Okay. The bees are antsy. Well, I guess that wouldn't be the proper term now, would it? <laughs> but they have nothing to forage and nothing better to do than to look at the beekeeper who they, I guess maybe they're recognizing me and uh, saying, look at that idiot. We've seen him before. I guess winter bees, you know, that is something that I hadn't thought of. If you're getting in them in, in winter time like I do, the winter bees do live longer. So who knows? Oh, there's the queen right there. Look at that red dot. Now the reason she has a red dot instead of a green one, which would be more accurate is because I cannot find my green pen. So I did find the red one and just gave her that mark there, but it's crazy introducing a queen into a colony late December in cold weather. And look at this brood over here. You see this cat brood? I'm not sure if you can see it with the lighting. That is all her brood. The other queen, if you want to watch that video, I'm going to leave it in the comments below pinned at the top. This queen is going to save this colony. And, and because of the actions that we took, the other queen only had drone brood in the cells. And now this is all nice flat worker brood. And this colony, I think if we give it a little bit of attention, is going to do fantastic. And that's what your job is as a beekeeper. You stand in between nature's rough ways and in your colony of bees. Does that mean that I'm wanting to breed from this colony right off the bat? Um, no, do I really want to let a weak or wimpy colony just keep doing, um, you know, producing drones and influencing its genetics throughout our bee yards? No, but I want to save every bee I can. Um, I don't want any of these hives to um, die if I can help it. Sometimes it happens though, and that is part of nature. We have to accept that also. You know, when I was raising a few thousand chicks a year, there's always some chicks that for whatever reason, we just couldn't save them. Um, so we always plan for a certain degree of loss. And with beekeeping, sometimes that happens as well. The more TLC you give your bees though, the less that's going to happen. And I notice a big trend between beekeepers who are very proactive than those who just get into their colonies at random or especially during those key moments in late summer and um, you know in the winter months even um, just not 
keeping track of what the colonies are doing and because of that they miss out on a lot of opportunities to help their colonies thrive or lose colonies because of negligence during those key moments and especially those rough times of the year the for us that would be july and august and september when varroa usually causes a lot of problems coupled with nutrition those are the times of the year that beekeepers need to learn the most in our area because it's anybody can keep bees in our springs our springs are fantastic but those are the hard months of the year i'd rather go through two winters than go through one of our dirts in summer that has a you know really poor dry fall like we did this last year but that's just part of beekeeping but this colony looks pretty good i mean it's not a nice big honey production colony but with some tlc i guarantee you we're going to get some good results out of this county this year this is what it means to be a beekeeper and it's a lot of fun and i love being able to take care of our bees thanks for watching our videos and if you want to see how we fix this colony check the comments below